If you find a sturdy box at your local thrift store, be sure to grab it because you're always going to find a use for it. Hi, my friends, Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm sharing how this $6.99 thrift store caddy box gets transformed into the sweetest vintage paintbrush organizer. Just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the So here's what I started with. It's a plywood caddy box, and I know plywood isn't the best looking, uh, but it had all these little cubbies, cubbies in it for holding different things, and it's built super sturdy. I started by giving it a little wipe down and then using my heat gun to remove the price tag. And as I mentioned before in a few of my other videos, if you ever have any stickers, price tags, anything with a sticky adhesive, heat from a heat gun or a hair dryer works fabulous to get it off. I wanted to cover up the plywood using a faux paint technique to create faux wood grain. Now, I've done this technique a few times on a few other projects, and I'll be quite honest, it hasn't turned out mm, great. <laughs> but for this box, I knew I was going to cover it up with the transfer afterwards anyway, so I thought, what a perfect way to practice with my faux grain tool. So what I did was I took some Van Dyke brown glaze and also chocolate chalk mineral paint. Uh, I was going to delete this part of the video because I could not get the chocolate mineral paint top open. And then I thought, no, this is a great opportunity to share a few quick tips with you all because I couldn't be the only one who has stuck on lids. Uh, these paints that have plastic lid tops often get adhered once the paint dries on them and sometimes it feels nearly impossible to open them. So I have a few tips for you. My number one tip is hot water tip. So take it run it under hot water as hot as you possibly can and often that'll loosen up the lid enough to open it. Tip number two is a preventative method. Uh, so use a cloth to wipe off any paint off the rim and then you could use a small around, amount of Vaseline or petroleum jelly just around the ridges and that way the lid will not stick. Now, that's a preventative method that when I'm in the middle of something, I don't bother with, but it definitely works. Tip number three is to use some plastic wrap. And this is great for keeping, uh, for also keeping your wood filler nice and moist. So just rip off a piece, piece of plastic wrap, uh, place it over the entire opening of the paint container, and then place the lid on top of the plastic wrap and screw on as you normally would. Tip number four, turn the jar upside down and bang it on the countertop, which is what I ended up doing. Uh, just bang that top on the countertop with a fair amount of strength and usually that will loosen up any dried paint. And the last tip I have for you is to use a rubber glove, which again, with the banging and the rubber glove, finally this lid came off because it was stuck on there hard. Uh, but the rubber glove gives, gives you enough grip to actually hold on to it and finally turn that lid off. So I really hope these tips have helped because I know how frustrating it could be when you're raring to get started on your project and that paint jar will not open. I have a full blog post on the these tips, which I'll add in the description down below. So once I got my chocolate paint open, I ended up adding it to my Van Dyke brown glaze. I did not measure, but I'm guessing it was about one third of the glaze to about two thirds of the chocolate paint. Once I added it to my container, I gave it a really good mixing. So the glaze and the paint were mixed thoroughly. Now for the fun part, working in sections and using my two inch mini brush, I brushed on this glaze paint mixture onto one side of the box. 
Uh, I brushed it on fairly, well, a good coat. It was fairly heavy, but I'll come back to that in a bit. I, I, this isn't the most ideal way to do it, what I did learn afterwards. But as you can see, I'm brushing on uh, a good amount of paint glaze mixture onto the box. Then taking my wood graining tool, I slid it across and kind of rocked it as I went across. Uh, so I keep it straight and then I sort of rock my hand. And here you can see how it creates this really interesting wood grain. I went ahead and repeated this process on all sides of the box including the top part with the handle. Now, a big shout out to Kay, who is a reader on the SI blog. Uh, she left me some fabulous tips to use this wood graining tool because I've seen some other uh, furniture artists use it and their grain turns out so realistic and beautiful. So a few little tips that she explained was uh, practice because it's a little challenging to get the hang of using it to get a really good pattern. And also the less paint you use, the better. And then clean off the tool right away. So I think next time I try this wood graining tool on one of my projects, I'm going to take her advice and do that. And hopefully it'll make a bit of a difference. So it'll get a more realistic uh, looking wood grain for me. However, it's this wasn't the perfect wood looking grain but it's just fine because I was going to cover it up with a transfer as I mentioned before so I was pretty happy with this. I used my heat gun to dry off all the sides and then I just left it to dry the full night and came back the next morning. I had this vintage post transfer in my inventory and I think it's the perfect project to use it on. It comes in a roll and in the container you end up with four separate sheets with a variety of designs on this transfer. Applying these transfers really couldn't be easier. You just decide where you want to put a uh, part of the design on your project. In my case, I really like the part of the letter uh, on the box. So I just took a Sharpie, marked it off where I was to cut the transfer design at. And I did the same for the top. Once I had it, the design cut out exactly where I wanted it, I wanted to place it onto the box in a straight manner. So I didn't, I didn't want it on an angle or anything, but you could put it on an angle. You can do it however you feel you want your transfer to look. And these are so fun to work with because you can place them sideways, upside down, <laughs> doesn't really matter. You can layer them with the other part of the design. Um, it, it, you can just create what Whatever you want to create and I find that one of my transfer rolls lasts for numerous projects it's very rare that I use a full roll on a project I think I did on maybe a couple of very large uh, like six and nine drawer dressers but other than that usually a transfer roll will last me numerous projects so they're very economical as well so here I'm just using the uh, stick applicator that's included with the transfers and you just rub it on. To make the rub on a little bit easier, I flipped the box uh, onto its back and then this way the transfer is much, much easier to apply. You'll notice that the transfer design starts looking as if it's coming off the mylar sheet and once that's once you see that it looks a little different after you've rubbed it, then you'll know to lift the sheet and it will adhere to your project. And if you by chance lift before it's 100% adhered, that's no problem. You just put the mylar sheet back down and start rubbing it a little bit more. So I went ahead and repeated the same process on the other side of the box using a different portion of this transfer design. Check this out. After you lift the mylar sheet and the transfer is adhered to your project, this is what it looks like. Now, depending on the color, 
of the project you're applying these transfers to, you might see the adhesive halo for these transfers. Uh, and that means they, if you don't want that look, you need to burnish them onto your project. So here I'm using a cloth, a micro cloth, and I'm just rubbing the transfer with the cloth uh, to get rid of most of that halo look. A soft cloth or your finger will work just fine, but I actually have a better tool for you. This is a burnishing pad. Uh, you can cut them down to size and they're just like sponges that have a little texture on them. They're very inexpensive. Like you can pick them up for two, three dollars. And if you're interested, I'll leave all the, um, supplies down below so you can just click and go grab one uh, it's really it makes the burnishing so much easier uh, because it has some texture to it you don't have to rub it quite as much and it burnishes the transfers beautifully so i went ahead and finished the entire box with different aspects of this transfer design including the handle part the top of the box for any of you that are interested in trying transfers, I have a full tutorial, which I'll list in the cards above and also in the description down below. Now I could have top coated this with gator hide or a poly or even some wax, but because this is gonna be a personal use to me and I'm gonna be using it for my paint brushes, I decided to leave it as is because I, I really don't mind seeing how durable this transfer is and seeing uh, if it gets a little more distressed, I'm really not, I'm not minding that at all. So I can't wait to show you the before and after. Here's the before. And here's the after. Isn't it adorable? It doesn't even look like the same box and it is perfect for my paint brushes. It's gonna be so easy to lug them around for different projects and what a cute little storage area for the paint brushes. I'm super pleased with this project. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, if you got any value from the video, please give it a like, uh, maybe share it, leave a comment down below. I love reading your comments. And if anybody has any tips on how to use these faux wood graining tools, I am all ears because now I'm on a mission. I, I have to master this. So I would love to hear if you have any tips and tricks for me. Uh, you can find the full tutorial over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. And until the next project, I hope you have a fabulous week. Bye for now, guys.